Toby is a tram engine. He has cow catchers and side plates and doesn't look like a steam engine at all. He takes trucks from farms and villages to the main line and is cheerful to everyone he meets. He has a coach called Henrietta who has seen better days. It's not fair at all, she grumbles, remembering that she used to be full and nine trucks would rattle behind her. Now there are only three or four, but the farms and factories send their goods mostly by lorry. Toby is always careful. The cars, buses and lorries often have accidents. Toby hasn't had an accident for years. The buses are crowded and Henrietta is empty. A lady and a stout gentleman stood on Toby's platform. He was, of course, the fat controller. But Toby didn't know this yet. Come on, Grandfather, cried the children. Do look at this engine. That's a tram engine, Stephen, said the fat controller. Is it electric? asked Bridget. Push! hissed Toby. Shh, shh, said her brother. You've offended him. But trams are electric, aren't they? They are mostly, but this is a steam tram. May we go in it, Grandfather? Please? Stop! said the fat controller to the guard. They all scrambled into Henrietta. Hip, hip, hooray! chanted Henrietta. But Toby did not sing. Electric indeed, electric indeed, he snorted. He was very hurt. What is your name? asked the fat controller. Toby, sir. Thank you, Toby, for a very nice ride. Thank you, sir, said Toby. He felt better now. This gentleman, he thought, is a gentleman who knows how to speak to engines. Children came every day for a fortnight. Sometimes they rode with the guard, sometimes in empty trucks. On the last day of all, the driver invited them into his cab. All were sorry when they had to go away. And the fat controller and his family thanked everyone. Come again soon, replied Toby. We will, we will, call the children. And they waved till Toby was out of sight. The months passed. Toby had few trucks and fewer passengers. Our last day, Toby, said his driver one morning. The manager says we must close tomorrow. That day, everyone wanted the chance of a last ride. The passengers joked and sang, but Toby and his driver wished they wouldn't. <laughs> Goodbye, Toby, said the passengers afterwards. We are sorry your line is closing down. So am I, said Toby. Nobody wants me, Toby thought, and went on happily to sleep. Next morning, the shed was flung open, and he woke with a start to see his driver waving a piece of paper. Wake up, Toby, they shouted, and listen to this. It's a letter from the stout gentleman. Toby listened and... But I mustn't tell you any more, or I shall spoil the next story. There's a line to a quarry at the end of Thomas's branch. It goes for some distance along the road. Thomas was always very careful to whistle here in case anyone was coming. Early one morning, a large policeman was sitting close to the line. Thomas liked policemen. He had been a great friend of the constable who had just retired. Peep, peep, he whistled. Good morning. Thomas expected that the new constable would be friendly too, but was sorry to see that he didn't look friendly at all. 
He was red in the face and very cross. Disgraceful, he spluttered. I didn't sleep a wink last night. It was so quiet, and now engines come whistling suddenly behind me. I'm sorry, sir, said Thomas. I only said good morning. A policeman pointed to Thomas. Where's your cow catcher, he asked. But I don't catch cows, sir. Don't be funny, snapped the policeman. He looked at Thomas's wheels. No side plates either. And he wrote in his notebook. Engines going on public roads must have their wheels covered and a cow catcher in front to protect people and animals from being dragged under the wheels if they stray onto the line. You haven't, so you are dangerous. Rubbish, said Thomas's driver. We've been along here hundreds of times and never had an accident. That makes it worse, the policeman answered. He wrote regular lawbreaker in his book. Thomas puffed sadly away. The fat controller was having breakfast. He was eating toast and marmalade. The butler came in. Excuse me, sir, you are wanted on the telephone. Bother that telephone, said the fat controller. I'm sorry, my dear, he said to his wife. Thomas is in trouble with the police and I must go at once. At the station, Thomas's driver told the fat controller what had happened. Dangerous to the public indeed, we'll see about that. The fat controller spoke to the policeman. But however much he argued with him, it was no good. The law is the law, he said, and we can't change it. The fat controller felt exhausted. I'm sorry, driver, he said. It's no use arguing with policemen. We will have to make those cowcatcher things for Thomas, I suppose. Everyone will laugh, sir, said Thomas. They'll say I look like a tram. The fat controller stirred. Then he laughed. Well done, Thomas. Why didn't I think of it before? We want a tram engine. When I was on my holiday, I met a nice little engine called Toby. He takes trucks from the farms, but the lorries are taking over most of his work and he needs a change. He has cow catchers and side plates. I'll write to his controller at once. A few days later, Toby arrived. That's a good engine, said the fat controller. I see you've brought your coach, Henrietta. You don't mind, do you, sir? asked Toby. The station master wanted to use her as a hen house, and that would never do. No, indeed, said the fat controller. We couldn't allow that. Toby made the silly trucks behave even better than Thomas did. First, Thomas was jealous, but he was so pleased when Toby rang his bell and frightened the policeman, they've been firm friends ever since. Toby and Henrietta are enjoying their new job on the island of Sodor but they do look old-fashioned and need new paint. James was very rude whenever he saw them. Ugh, what dirty objects, he would say. At last, Toby lost patience. James, he asked, why are you red? I am a splendid engine, answered James, ready for anything. You never see my paint dirty. Oh, said Toby innocently, that's why you once needed bootlaces to be ready, I suppose. James went redder than ever and snorted off. It was such an insult to be reminded of the time a bootlace had been used to mend a hole in his coaches. At 
the end of the line, James left his coaches and got ready for his next train. It was a slow goods, stopping at every station to pick up and set down trucks. James hated slow goods trains. Dirty trucks from dirty sidings. Blech. Starting with only a few, he picked up more and more trucks at each station till he had a long train. At first, the trucks behaved well, but James bumped them so crossly that they were determined to pay him back. Presently, they approached the top of Gordon's Hill. Heavy goods trains halt here to pin down their brakes. James had had an accident with trucks before and should have remembered this. Wait, James, wait, said the driver, but James wouldn't wait. He was too busy thinking what he would say to Toby when they next met. The truck's chance had come. Hurrah, hurrah, they laughed, and banging their buffers, they pushed him down the hill. On, 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 yelled the trucks. I've got to stop, I've got to stop, groaned James. Through the station they thundered, disaster lay ahead. Something sticky splashed all over James. He had run into two tar wagons and was black from smoke box to cab. He was more dirty than hurt, but the tar wagons and some trucks were all to pieces. Toby and Percy were sent to help and came as quickly as they could. Look here, Percy, exclaimed Toby. Whatever is that dirty object? That's James, didn't you know? It's James's shape, said Toby. But James is a splendid red engine, and you never see his paint dirty. James pretended he hadn't heard. <laughs> Toby and Percy cleared away the unheard trucks and helped James home. The fat controller met them. Well done, Percy and Toby. He turned to James. Fancy letting your trucks run away. I am surprised. You're not fit to be seen. You must be cleaned at once. Toby shall have a new coat of paint. Please, sir, can Henrietta have one too, said Toby. Certainly, Toby. Oh, thank you, sir. She will be pleased. All James could do was watch Toby as he ran off happily with the news.